All right, and now on for our first real coding lesson for the Introduction to Axum course. Uh, we're going to be creating the uh, the Hello World for an API, which is really just on a GET request, send back the text "Hello World" and a and a two hundred response. Um, so first of all, well, we need to get started. I have an empty folder, but there's absolutely nothing in here. Uh, so first of all, let's just create a brand new Rust application because that's the basis that we're gonna start this on. So we're gonna do a cargo. Now I already have a folder for this, so I'm gonna do cargo in it, which creates a binary package. Uh, and now we have access to main.rs. If I did cargo run, uh, we get our hello world here. Although this isn't the hello world that I was really thinking of. So next, we need to go find Axum to then install it. Uh, let's head over to our browser. I'm going to go to crates and search for Axum. I do recommend that you search crates just for the direct name, uh, just to make sure that uh, you're getting the correct one. There have been some uh, name um, name squatting uh, sort of packages, and it would um, we haven't gotten the problem yet, but I, I foresee that we will have a problem where eventually some bad actors will sit on like Axum R or some misspelling of it and then uh, potentially do bad things to our systems. So this is what we want. This is Axum. It is from Tokyo RS, which is exactly what we're looking for. So Tokyo RS core. Uh, all right. So now I could just copy this and put this into the creates that uh, um, creates a file, but there's a better way of doing that if you have the latest version of Rust now. Now we can come to our terminal, make sure that we're we're in the same folder where the the uh, cargo is, and we can just do uh, cargo add axum. And uh, it adds it to its listed dependencies. If we take a look at cargo.toml now, it actually has Axum. It puts the latest version in there. Uh, but on top of it, it also shows us what are the possible features for us to use. So in this case, um, we don't really need any of these features here. However, we are going to want Tokyo. Uh, we're going to need uh, Tokyo to sort of work with Axum together. They're made by the same team and they're made to work together. So let's go ahead and search for Tokyo just to make sure we get the spelling correctly. So it is with an I-O. And it's from the same owners. So we're going to do a cargo add Tokyo. Now this has uh, two features that we're gonna be really interested in. Uh, we're interested in the macros feature and we're interested in um, RT multi-thread. Uh, both those are gonna sort of be used uh, behind the scenes by, um, by Axum as we're, we're trying to use Axum uh, Tokyo for this. Um, so to add in a feature now, we're just gonna hit up arrow here so we just get that last uh, command, and I'm going to use a dash capital F, and then put in the name of the feature that I'm looking for. So macros, another dash capital F, and I'm just going to copy paste this RT multi thread here. Now it shows macros and RT multi thread. If I close the terminal, it's brought in the features for me. This is my new favorite way of installing uh, packages or, or modules or crates. Um, and it's the favorite way of sort of checking what the features are and adding those to. All right, so we've got those. Um, let's now spin up and actually create our server. Okay, so if we were to look at the documentation here, let's actually go into the docs. If where oh this is Tokyo Docs I want I want Axum Docs. In the Axum Docs there is a Hello World that they recommend here. 
Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hand code this in, and I highly recommend that when you're sort of learning and trying to uh, I get, you know, sort of like internalize a lot of this code, you just type everything in instead of copy paste. That's what I'm gonna do myself. I have this code open in another window. Uh, so let's head on over here. Okay, so um, first off, in main, it wants us to uh, mark main as like a Tokyo main, and then we can have main be async. Now we can do that because we pulled in Tokyo with the macros. So we're gonna do Tokyo main. Uh, okay, now it's yelling at us that we don't have the async keyword. Okay, let's pull in async for that. Okay, you're happy. Um, we don't need this hello world here. Uh, we need to create a new router though. Um, to create the new router, I do notice, well, let, let's create this, then we can refactor it a little bit. So do let our app equals our router new. Um, we're gonna create a route and then where this route is going to be. So this is gonna be like localhost, port, whatever it is, then just the slash, that, that's it. Uh, now we have the route handler. So we're gonna do a get, pull that in from uh, Axum routing and we have a closure here that takes in an async, uh, an async block. We're gonna just say return from hello world. Semicolon that. Now we need to start our server. I'm gonna do axum server bind. Um, okay, so we get to choose where exactly it's going. So we could do something like 127.001. Um, that's certainly an, uh, an option. I do like what they suggest here, which is the zeros. So zero, 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 zero. This will make it compatible with Docker containers um, and virtual machines to sort of uh, go outside of it. Uh, then we're going to parse this and unwrap you in, in the case that it fails. Then we're going to serve it, um, app into make service. Uh, we have to await this and unwrap. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. First of all, router new, you don't know what this is. So that's import router. Uh, you don't know what this parse is. Now I noticed that I missed, I uh, missed a couple things. First of all, you need a reference here. That makes you happy, but I also need to tell it what port to be on. So let's do the 3000, just like they suggest. I don't think I have anything running on that server. All right, well, this is gonna work. Uh, let's go ahead and run this. It's gonna open up our terminal. I'm gonna do a cargo run just like any other application. Uh, that's gonna work. It's gonna compile everything. And then it just sort of sits there, but that's fine. That actually means that it's working. If I open up ThunderClient, we can do a new request. We're going to do a get to uh, localhost port 3000. That's it. If I hit send, we get our hello world. Okay, now before I sort of close this off, I wanna do a little bit of refactoring to then show you what parts we can sort of pull out and what these really mean. Uh, specifically around this get and this closure here, because we don't want to write all of our uh, routing logic inside of a, a manual closure like this. Let's go ahead and create an async function. Uh, we'll call this like, hello, world, 
we don't need to take anything in. Um, and we need to return maybe a string. Uh, and we're going to return, maybe we need to return like a static string. Uh, let's do our hello world. I'll do an extra, a few extra uh, explanation points. I'll do two owned. Um, it's never used now. So what I can do is inside of this get, I'm going to put a reference to that hello world. I'm not going to use the parentheses for this. Uh, so when I hit save, everything is still working. Rust Analyzer is not complaining to us. And when I hit, we have to re recompile and restart here. That's fine. If I hit the new request again, I now get this new hello world. So if you want complicated logic, we can use a separated function. It does have to be async. It can return whatever data type that we're planning on returning. Uh, this specifically returns a 200. Uh, we'll go over later how to return different uh, error, you know, HTTP status codes. Uh, and then just basically whatever we're going to return, in this case, a string. And we put that in here without the parentheses. If you put the parentheses in here, you're going to get an error. And it's going to look a little bit weird and not necessarily tell you exactly what's going on. So that's really important. And then we have, um, we have our server running here. And every time you make a change, you have to restart your server. This is very similar to other languages and other backend frameworks where we have to constantly restart. Uh, all right. Well, anyways, that is creating a hello world in Rust. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.